So which body shape do you choose? Guys, I'm Marcus with Haggerty's Music, and it can be overwhelming. Just in the store, I think I have over 75 Taylor guitars on display, and today we have six body shapes to choose from. So without many road shows going on, in fact, there's really no road shows that happened last year, or maybe you're in a town where you'll never see a road show. Maybe you have a dealer that doesn't have any more than a few in at a time. I wanna to try to help you out dissect the shapes, why, where they fit in the quiver, how they impact your tone. And so I've got the Grand Concert, the Grand Theater, the Grand Auditorium. Behind me I have a Grand Pacific. Over here I have a Grand Symphony and a Grand Orchestra. And they all are really unique. There's a cool story behind them. So keep watching. We're going to break it down. And then in a later video, after this one, we're going to talk about what does that wood do in a specific body shape. So welcome to our virtual Taylor Guitar Roadshow. And I'm gonna start with the Grand Theater. This is the newest one. There's a lot of buzz on this. It's an exciting model. One, because it has a 24 and an eighth scale versus the 24 and seven eighth scale, meaning it's almost like a parlor guitar. It's a bit shorter here. And so that's gonna be a little easier to reach if your hands are smaller, uh, if you just want something very, very relaxed to play. But it's a different bracing than every guitar behind me. They call this a C-class bracing or a cantilevered bracing. So hailing back from the days of violins where there was a bass bar down the middle that helps enhance the low tone and transmits that low vibration of the string into the top, that's what this has. And then the bracing comes out over that to support the rest of the top. And this provides a very rich foundation. Much different than maybe a grand concert you've played this isn't designed to have even volume across the strings. It's designed to be that warm guitar for any song you want to play. But the low end bass is really astounding for a guitar this size. It's just a tad bit bigger than a GS Mini, but it's all solid woods. The one I'm playing is the Urban Ash back and sides with the Sitka Spruce top. And the bottom end really pops out. And when compared to a grand concert, this is much more rich sounding down low. So the purpose of this model is to have this compact yet full sounding guitar, and they have killed it. And of course, this comes with the new Aero case, which is a very beautiful gig bag. It's heavy duty. It's almost like a hard case, but um, that's, that's, that's the beginning. This is the smallest size. If you're a smaller statured person or you want a great travel guitar that has the same response and range as your favorite uh, Grand Auditorium or Grand Symphony, this fits the bill. I play a Grand Symphony, and when I play this, I am not lacking any of the tone, any of the low um, sounds that really hit me. It's just smaller, it's compact. So that's where this one fits in. So next we have the Grand Concert. The Grand Concert was designed to keep every string the exact same volume. If I hit every string, Nothing is popping out. Even up high, that bass is not overpowering. The small body shape makes it a great couch guitar. Um, a lot of times we see people buy this after their grand auditorium, after their grand symphony, because they want something a little bit more comfortable to play. At a 24 and 7 8 scale, it's still the same as your other guitars, but it's just very even. It's awesome, I find, dynamically, because one of the things that happens with the smaller top is that it takes less finger input to get the volume out of your guitar. There's less surface to vibrate. On a bigger guitar, it takes more energy 
to excite the wood to its full potential. And so on a smaller body, you don't have to play as hard to fully get that guitar moving, if you will. And so, you know, one of the things that I find is the dynamic range that I have to go really quiet, but have the guitar sound full and then bring it up into a medium loud volume is exceptional. gives me that range that I need. Now, conversely, if you need a lot of power and you're really going after this, the top is gonna to break up quicker than the other bodies. It just doesn't have that. And you can hear that, and it's not gonna, I'll be the first to tell you, this isn't gonna sound pretty. The louder you get and you're trying to force it, you cap out at a point where the guitar just doesn't want to be driven like that, which can be cool if you really want to, you know, if, you're, if you really want that punch. But um, that's where we would go up in the sizes. So when we go up to the Grand Auditorium, it changes two things. The Grand Auditorium adds a little, some bass down low because of the larger bout. Uh, we call this the lower bout, and this is the waist, the upper bout, and so with this being a little bit bigger, you have great balance, but that low end pops up. So not only does this add more low end, but I kind of call this the uh, Swiss army knife of the Taylor guitar lineup. If you need a guitar that just does everything well, it'll cut through the mix, it has great low end, you can sing along with all your modern songs, use modern voicings, uh, it's a great storytelling guitar, songwriting guitar, couch guitar, gig, any song out there. I love the Rosewood back inside Sitka Spruce Top Grand Auditorium. You know, and you can, there's some like really classic voicings on this guitar. Really airy if it wants to be. So where does the Grand Auditorium fit? To a lot of people, this is their first tailor because it just does everything well. You've got good low end, but it's not overpowering. It produces good volume. You can get more volume out of it than you can at Grand Concert. That low end bass boost and the shimmery highs allows a scoop in the EQ band. So with a rosewood back inside Sitka Spruce Top, just think about this EQ band set with some highs and some lows scooped up and there's a spot for your voice to sit or maybe another soloist with you if you're in a guitar duo. It just makes everything sound fantastic. So next we're going to move up to the newly redesigned Grand Symphony. Guys, this guitar is so cool. So it is a bigger lower bout. The whole body is bigger. So you can tell when you're playing this that there's, there's more of it, right? So if you're smaller statured, maybe this isn't the guitar for you. Maybe if you're not smaller statured, but you're sitting on your couch and you want a really comfortable guitar to play, well, maybe the Grand Concert and the Grand Theater is gonna be that guitar for this. But when it comes to sound, 
this thing's amazing. When I was talking to Andy Powers about it, um, you know, the name is Grand Symphony. And my first Taylor was a Grand Symphony, so I'm very, very familiar with I still have the guitar. I've been playing it for 13 years now. This total redesign reshaped the sound. And what he told me was he wanted it to be like its namesake, the Grand Symphony. When you're sitting in the middle of an orchestra or when you're sitting in the audience and you're listening, you can hear the basses pop out, which is incredible if you think about the number of violins that are playing up high, right? You can hear the bass, you can hear the cellos and the viola. You can, it's a powerful moving sound. That's this guitar. A lot of people think like, well, what's with the second sound hole? One of the ways I like to describe it is if you were building a speaker cabinet, the sound hole is important because as the speaker's moving in and out, air has to move. And so the bigger the hole, the quicker that air gets out and changes how the speaker's responding. When he put another hole in here, it's changing how the guitar is fundamentally vibrating. And it's also allowing another spot for that sound to escape. So it fills the room different. It takes frequencies and does something different in the room with them, but it allows that low end to attack, but not be woofy, which is what I noticed from my old Grand Symphony. My old, my Grand Symphony, which is not this new model, when I hit it and do something like this, it's really woofy. And this one, it's so well balanced with the top, The low end is still there, but the high end is equally there. Remember how I was talking about the small grand concert? There's a volume limit and it's designed to, it has great sound and the body starts moving and doing everything it needs to do at a really low volume. This is a big guitar. To get everything out of it that I want, I usually play it a little bit harder. I'm not killing it. But I stroke it a little bit harder to get that top moving and it rewards me with some great sounds. And one thing I've noticed, it has a real uh, ability to take the music where I want to take it. So what do I mean by that? Uh, I like playing some jazz and some blues. A, a lot of the times that's, that's where I focus my time. It's amazing how warm this guitar sounds as a Sitka spruce top with rosewood. can make it really warm. I can make it bassy and bright. I can hit her hard up top and the highs come through. I can basically do what I want with the guitar and get whatever sound I want. way more so than I can on maybe the grand concert because I have that low end to work with. I've got the high end shimmer to work with. Like the grand auditorium, I've got this scooped sound, but everything just seems more powerful, more balanced. It's amazing. And of course the volume level is greater. It's just a little bit bigger guitar. So it's a fantastic rig. you're uh, you know maybe a little bit smaller and it's not comfortable sitting on the couch you know on a strap on stage playing it it has the power that you need has the dynamic range you can get that volume out of it to cut through the mix so it's not like if you're maybe a little bit smaller this guitar isn't for you it just has a different purpose and that's important to understand all right the grand orchestra this is the big boy so the largest, lowest bout, kind of like, you know, the jumbo. This is the biggest one. Everything I've said about getting volume, needing the energy to input into the guitar. If you need a big, powerful guitar like that sound, want the bigger body, this is your guitar. When I'm listening to this guitar, I just hear more of everything with even extra bass. 
So unlike the Grand Symphony that's super well balanced, I don't necessarily hear this guitar as super well balanced in the Rosewood and Sitka version. Later we're gonna talk about woods. My favorite version of a grand orchestra, just because of my ear and how I hear things, has the maple back and sides. But this is about what do the shapes do to the sound. And so now let's listen to all of these guitars in a row with a basic E chord. comes through you still have the brights but there's just a lot of low end and of course I have my volume ceiling keeps those tones intact and stable higher in the register so it's a big guitar it has a purpose it's it'll get you the volume you need so if you're in a jam session that you're having a problem cutting through getting this one or the maple back and sides version it it's going to project your sound and so that is all of the shapes except for one and I've left that until the end for a reason because it was designed to be a totally different voice for Taylor. The Grand Pacific. This is a warmer tone designed to kind of be that singer-songwriter, warm, all of the notes kind of blend together. So a grand auditorium or a grand symphony or a grand anything uh, aside from this guitar, you can kind of think like the sound waves are a, a triangle, okay? Like very defined edges to the notes and they cut through. And if you go back and listen to this video again, you listen for each string, you can kind of hear that. With this guitar, they kind of describe it like the sounds are more oval. Everything has soft edges and blends together. So, um, Andy Powers is a, was really inspired by Doc Watson when he was a boy and tells a really great story about that sound. And he's had the chance to work. Uh, he's, he's repaired just all these old guitars. And he's had guitars in his lap that he's got the record for. And he's listened to the record and he's listened to the guitar. And it's like, what kind of recording wizardry did they use for this? You know, And he wanted to just be able to have a guitar that can speak that language. Because as you know, there's so many things that translate between what's happening on the microphone to the guitar, where the mic position is, what's in the room, what kind of strings did you use? But it's really hard to get a recording that sounds how you want it to sound. And even harder um, to have a guitar that speaks this, uh, you know, this thing that you're hearing out of this album, right? Because we don't know what happened on the album. We don't know what the everything was, but when you play it, and then you hear yourself back and you listen to that album, you're like, man, that guitar doesn't sound anything like it. So just think about that struggle, right? Here you've got this master builder. He's got all these awesome guitars, great designs, V-class bracing, and he wants this guitar that speaks this other language you know, these, these recordings that inspired him. And so, enter Grand Pacific. So some would call this a dreadnought, or a slope shoulder dreadnought is maybe the closest thing. And by the measurements, yes, that's what it is. But the idea that I just spoke about is why he wanted to create this instrument. And I've spent a, a frog hair more time on describing that because I think it's important to understand why this guitar is in the lineup. And the other really awesome thing about this guitar is when you're doing what I'm doing, not plugging in, using a microphone, this guitar is super easy to record, even low end.
right, so one of the things that I want you to come away with about this guitar is this fundamental difference, this um, idea of what he's trying to accomplish. And a really neat thing about this guitar is that it is so easy to record with a microphone like what I'm doing right here. Every one of these guitars, I'm not plugged in, I'm using this microphone. And if you have a traditional dreadnought body, and Taylor used to make the dreadnought body in their alcohol plant, why does that not exist anymore? Well, there's some great dreadnoughts out there, right? Martin makes an amazing dreadnought. Gibson makes an amazing dreadnought. But if you go into the recording studio with that dreadnought and you put a mic in front of it, it's kind of a studio guy's nightmare. It is really hard to record. There's this woofiness that happens with the microphone. And he wanted to take care of that. So two things, create this warm sounding guitar that hails back to these sounds from his greatest inspirations and a guitar that's really easy to record. You hear that warmth? So this guitar, again, it holds a different place in the entire lineup. If you want to carry your own in a bluegrass jam, have an amazing warm sound for some of that music that's in your head that's maybe hails back to some of those old vinyls. Maybe you want something that just blends, but yet it's powerful. Maybe the old Americana sound. This can pull it off. And, you know, it, it can do all the other stuff too. But it's a different voice. So let's hear that again compared to a grand auditorium. All right, so that's all the body shapes. I didn't do a lot of playing. I wanted you to understand specifically how the shapes fit in, and next we're going to talk about tone woods. Because once you have that fundamental shape, that idea of what you want to start with, we can enhance certain features with what, uh, whether we're using rosewood or mahogany or maple, whether you want a flat EQ or a scooped EQ, a bright EQ. So that's the really great thing about this lineup, is I can just dial it in exactly to what you're looking for in a guitar. And uh, it's really fun to do. It's fun to have the conversation. So uh, check out the next video on Tonewoods.